Governor Josh Green and the state's tourism director met with executives at two of Japan's major airlines in Tokyo this week. And they talked about ways to bring Japanese visitors back to Hawaii. Casey Lan and Ashley Nagaoka are there. Aloha from Ginza. We're here in the thick of it, Ash. This is where commerce happens. There's so many shopping outlets. There's so many stores. Um, this is where we're staying in. It's such a cool spot to be in. But when we talk about business and commerce, uh, today was a really important day for the Hawaii delegation. The governor, of course, yesterday was meeting with politicians uh, well, earlier in the week. And, and then we had the Mana Up, that shopping experience at the Haneda Airport. But today was really focused on air travel specifically, right? That's right. The Hawaii delegation they met with Japan Airlines and ANA, two of Japan's major airlines uh, with service to Hawaii. And they spoke with company executives about what is being done to bring more Japanese visitors to Hawaii. Japan Airlines, very interesting, they said they don't expect to see 2019 levels of visitors, at least on their planes, for another two years. And a lot of that is has to do with, I mean, the, it, it's the obvious, the yen, and that's not going to fix itself overnight, right? Right. Uh, so a weak yen, Japanese also so they don't have a desire to travel right now. The Japanese government just recently in May dropped all COVID restrictions. So it hasn't been very long since the Japanese were allowed to travel internationally. They've been encouraged to travel domestically to support their economy here, but to go to places like Hawaii, which is their number one destination, that has yet to be seen. So Jimmy Tokioka, he is the new director of DBET. He is here on this trip with the delegation. It's his first time to Japan. He doesn't enjoy flying, so he says that's why he's put it off, but he understands how important this market is to Hawaii, and that's why he's here. So we asked him about the recovery of Japanese visitors. Here's some of what he had to say. We still know that the, the market from Japan, from Japanese people to Hawaii is down and it's at 38% of where it was pre-pandemic. Pre so we know we have a lot of work to do with that. We know we have a lot of work to do uh, because the yen is not as strong as the dollar. Uh, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible. I know the governor's big initiatives in a lot of these meetings is to look at pre-clearance so that Japanese travelers don't have to wait as, uh, as long as up to an hour and a half to two hours at uh, Customs and Border Patrol when it's really, really busy. Um, so that, that's uh, something that we really think uh, would be helpful to the visitors uh, from Japan and, and all of the companies, whether they were airlines or just businesses, really support that. Again, we are so grateful to have the exclusive opportunity to be traveling with the governor and the delegation here in Japan. Our uh, full coverage actually begins next week. We've got a lot to cover. In the meantime, though, as we mentioned, the yen. Yes. Very weak as the Japanese visitors wait for it to strengthen so it's more affordable to go to Hawaii. I hate to say it, Ash, it's kind of good for us yes, here. Yes, we've been encouraged to go shopping because uh, the dollar goes a long way now. So, omiyage requests, guys? Any, anything you guys want, we've got you covered, and I'll try to bring it all back, most of it back anyway. It's a long flight. It is. Those Kit Kats <laughs> might, not, they might last. not last. But we'll do our best. Anyway, signing off from Ginza in Tokyo, Japan. Aloha. Very little hope. You think he's that it's actually? You think he's actually going to put a real effort into this? I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Maybe, and then he'll just eat it on the plane on the way back. Yeah, it is a long <laughs> plane ride. That's yeah, true.